Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first of five very special Learn with Jasons. We're going to do a lot today. All right, this is going to be this is going to be big. So we're we're going to do this in five parts across two days. So today we're going to do the first three. On Wednesday, we're going to do two more, and our goal is to build a whole Shopify-powered, database-backed, uh, command bar-driven, email notification sending, error monitored e-commerce app, and we're going to do it all in about five hours total. <laughs> and so, no uh, so to help with that, first and foremost, we're bringing in Shopify expert Kelly Vaughn. Kelly, how you doing? I'm great. How are you? Oh, you know, I'm just uh, signing up for a lot of pain. It's... <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You know, I love this kind of build, like this whole like five part series, because usually I hit part one. I'm like, cool, good enough. Let's ship it. Um, <laughs> you know, so good. I get to see see things continue to happen, but I don't have to write the code. It's great. But chat, you're not going to do that, right? Like you're you would never leave us after part one. You're you're hanging out. You're here to the end. Ride or die. Um, That's right. I'm seeing a ton of first time chats, which also what a cool feature from Twitch to to show first time chats. Welcome uh, to everybody who's here. I see Francisco. I see uh, it, there's a uh, Siraj, Zila Flash, uh, Sammy. Like, what up, y'all? Thank you so much for hanging out today. This is going to be so much fun. I see a lot of familiar faces in here, too. Um, I am I am pumped. This is going to be fun. However, we don't have any time to get this done so uh we we're doing this in an hour and what we have to do is we need to build out a full shopping cart experience and we we got to do it fast so kelly before we start why don't you give everybody a quick background on who you are and then yeah. we'll, we'll jump right in yeah so my name is kelly vaughn i am the founder and ceo of the taproom and also very recently co-founder of Gavalo. I have Congrats. been a Shopify partner. Thank you. I've been a Shopify partner for a little over seven years now. So I I live, eat, breathe, sleep, dream about, unfortunately, e-commerce <laughs> literally all the time. Um, I've been coding for almost 20 years and I live in Atlanta and my house smells like countertops were just put in because countertops were just put in. I'm really excited. Oh, congrats on the countertops. I'm, I'm thank you. For that. <laughs> And uh, thank you for the sub. I see some subs coming in. I saw Jimena earlier. I see uh, Mechanic now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's jump over and start building this thing. So um, we're going to get right into this screen and I'm going to show you this is this is where we were going. OK, so there was a whole gimmick, right? Like we, we were originally planning to do this live at Jamstack Conf and we had this whole like funny idea of what we were going to do and we were going to build out this site and uh, we were going to pretend that I had like forgotten to build it so that during the conference, I was going to build the swag site to give away the swag. Um, as some of you may know, we had the most like Murphy's law of all things happen. And a bird flew into a transformer and took out power for the whole neighborhood that we were trying to film in, um, which meant that we weren't able to do the live stream part because our, our hotspot just wasn't strong enough to do that effectively. So we rescheduled, which means that this is going to seem a lot less uh, funny i guess and and so we'll just you know what if we can't be funny we'll be useful right i guess that's there i guess if we had to optimize for one thing um but so here's what we have right now we have this cart kind of slide out deal we've got these two pieces of swag and these are set up where you can kind of choose the the t-shirt size but when you click these buttons nothing happens right they don't do anything you're not updating your cart so what I wanted to work with you on, um, and thank you all for the the bits and the cheers. Thank you all very much. Still seeing a lot of first time chatters. What up, y'all? Uh, somebody's watching from the Chick Fil A drive through. I good I, choice. Props, props. <laughs> Xander gifting out a bunch of subs. Thank you very much. Welcome everybody. Make sure you use that boop emote because even though the background's a little bit different today, it still works. Um, <laughs> okay, so here's what we need to do. We need to use Shopify's uh, storefront API because they have a new cart feature, right? So if I look at the reference, we've got cart and this is the feature that we want to use. I'll drop this in the chat for everybody to look at. Um, but so the, the way that I was thinking of making this work is this site is built in Astro. Um, and so if we look at the site itself, 
we can see that we've got um, we've got like a basic layout, and our layout's fairly straightforward here. We we have um, like a head. We've got our styles. I, I'm not going to go into the CSS at all today. I actually wrote all this ahead of time so that we we wouldn't have to focus too much on it. So let me just collapse that. Uh, but go check it out if you want to see it. It was fun to write. I think there's some cool stuff in there. Um, we have a header. Our header loads a client component. This is a React component or a Preact component, strictly speaking, that will load when the site loads. So this is why we use this client load, um, and that'll actually rehydrate. Um, and then that's it. We have the slot where the rest of our content goes, and that's where this index.astro comes in. So in index.astro, again, I'm going to collapse the styles. We have our layout, which is what we just looked at. That wraps the whole thing and sets the title. And then we have our add to cart button. And that also is going to hydrate as soon as we get an idle. Uh, it's like request idle callback, I think, is what it uses. Um, and this gives us our two things. So I, I pulled these in hard coded from Shopify. These are the variant IDs for the Jamstack comp slap bracelet and also for the swag pack. Um, and so these are set up in such a way that you can choose the size that you want. And then what we need to make these do is if we look in this add to cart button, um, we like if there are options, we provide a select and then we show a button and button on click adds to cart. Uh, but that add to cart doesn't do anything, right? Um, so we need to make this add to cart button work. And we also need the ability to load our cart where we have an empty. And then um, we need to be able to like display the cart itself because right now we don't have it, right? There is no, there is no cart. We're just setting it empty. So that's what we need your brilliant mind for, Kelly. Cool. Just a couple things. Yeah, just a couple things. So the probably the easiest way to do this is going to be through Netlify functions because we got to protect those API keys. Um, yep. And I have this set up already where we can run Netlify dev. And I'll show here that bada bing, here it goes. We already have all of the environment variables we're going to need. So um, we can touch lightly on how you would find those things, but we're not actually going to like go get them today because we just don't have time. Um, and we can also see that there are some functions here that I need to check and make sure I'm on the right branch so that we don't. <laughs> Surprise, we're done. Ah, here we go. So I, I created them, but they're all to do. Perfect. That's what I wanted. Cool. Good. So we don't have to do some of the, the like really structural stuff. So for example, here's our create cart. This has a like send to Netlify or send Shopify storefront request we don't have to write this, right? I wrote this ahead of time. So this is just a fetch API. This is the built-in kind of fetch API. We're using node fetch to uh, simulate the browser fetch API. And we send off the GraphQL query and any variables as a post request uh, using application JSON. And then we send in our storefront access token, which lets us actually make the request. Um, and then down here, we're going to actually use that. But right now, we don't use it at all. It's just here ready for us to use so that we can pull that around. Um, load cart, we pull in that send Shopify storefront request so that we can use it. And the same with add to cart, we're pulling it in. Um, I could have set this up in like a utilities function. I just didn't. I don't know why. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's that's where we're starting. That's where we're going. Uh, should we Should we build? Yeah, let's build. All right, so what should I do first? I was going to ask you the same thing. Um, I do want to <laughs> preface uh, one thing. So, so as Jason mentioned, we're using the cart API. This is brand new as of this month. So if you already created a, a like a private API key to use a storefront API prior to October, you need to go in and update to be on 2021.10 if you want access to the cart API. So just mm. a heads up there. Um, I just saved you a lot of <laughs> stress and struggle <laughs> waiting to find out why why nothing's working yes um and so let me make sure that i have the uh netlify my shopify.com and that should let me get to the admin it does okay i'm gonna i'm logging in really quick so that i can do this off screen and then i will show everybody what we're looking at yeah here is our 
If you're unfamiliar with Shopify's APIs, uh, when we're when we're looking at Shopify's APIs, there are two primary ones. There's the admin API and the storefront API. You hackers, uh, the admin you, API, you dirty hackers. <laughs> The admin API is uh, usually used when you're like creating an, uh, like a, an application, like a, like a Shopify app, um, whether it's a private app, custom app, or public app, doesn't matter. Um, you don't display this API key anywhere, just never, never. Um, on the storefront API, this is going to be anything that's front facing. So anything that happens either on the Shopify storefront or if you're doing a headless build. Uh, and it's actually okay to expose that key because you're not creating deleting customers products or mm -hmm. things like that it's just a manipulation of data that already is safe for the storefront yes now in this case we we are doing it i think in a serverless function so technically we aren't exposing that key um but you know we got options right <laughs> so options you are do, always good to have yes. yeah uh so so quick overview here we have the um this is like the netlify swag store and we've got a few things in here here's like old jamstack.com stuff here's the the swag bracelet and all that good stuff um but this is what powers swag.netlify.com um so if you're interested in in any netlify stuff you can you can go find it there but we have a couple things that aren't in there like this this uh the other jamstack.com thing where's the swag pack jamstack swag pack <laughs> Good name. Uh, but yeah, so this is this is our swag pack that we want to be able to sell, and that's what we're pulling in here. Um, and when we look at this site, this is what we're pulling in. Like this is the swag pack and the the slap bracelet that we're pulling in. Yes. Um, so to use the cart API, we need to go to apps. And then we've got this like Shopify graphical. That's, graphical is just for like internal if you want to like test on Shopify. So you have two options here if you're building like for yourself or for a client. You can either go the private app route or you can go the custom app route. Private app isn't just uh, if you scroll all the way to the bottom of the screen, uh, there's a hidden thing that says manage private apps down there. You'd click on that to actually go through the process to create a private app. If you're working with a merchant, uh, it's gated so the merchant has to allow the creation of private apps the other option would be to create a custom app which is an app you'd actually install on the store itself mm -hmm. uh where you can build like a an, a user interface uh for the app if, if the merchant needs to you know manipulate any data um and you create that from within the shopify partners uh portal so partners.shopify.com if you're not already a shopify partner it's free to sign up you should do it it's fun uh, but whenever you're not doing anything that involves like an admin UI, it's, it's purely middleware. I recommend going the private app route because it's just a lot faster. It is a lot faster. This is my friend, Kurt. <laughs> Hello, Kurt. Um, okay, so now that we've got, so I basically, if we, if we click in here, you can see your, oh shit. Do I need to roll these now? Um, I yeah. It depends. Just all you need to do is uh, disable all permissions. Um, the storefront API, again, doesn't matter. Um, just make sure the app itself, did, you don't have any admin API permissions enabled. Okay. Let me go double check that I did that. So I'm just. It is gonna... a Kurt with a K Hold to answer your second. question. <laughs> um... Doesn't hurt to also refresh it if you. Uh, I don't think you're actually using it, though. I think you're just going storefront. Yeah, I just got to make sure that I didn't like accidentally show a whole bunch of permissions to everybody because I don't know <laughs> what these are set for. I thought they would be hidden. I'm Quick, delete sorry. the store. Yeah, get rid of it. Get rid of it. Uh, load, load. Oh, no. OK, while we're waiting for that to happen, um, let's let's maybe write some code, right? So yeah, let's write some the, code. The first and foremost thing that we want to do is we need to what, like actually create a cart? Yeah, let's let's start with creating the cart. Okay. We're not going to have any data to pull into it yet, but you need it so you can actually see something's happening. Yes. Okay. So the first thing that we want to do is uh, to create a cart, we need to like make a request for one. So Correct. in here we have our create cart and I, through the power of movie magic, um, I'm going to just have this query ready to go. So let me set this in here. So this is the query that we need to fire off, right? So to do that, 
um, we've got this send Shopify request, right? So we, we built that ahead of time. Yep. So I'm going to await fetch and then, I don't know. No, you what can just I do doing? await. What am I, I just send. said what I was going <laughs> to do. Don't redo your work. <laughs> what did I just say? Uh, okay. And then for variables, do I need any variables when I'm creating a cart? Like, do I have to tell it to do anything? No, you don't need any variables in this at this moment. Okay. All this so, is doing is just creating a, a an instance of a cart. There's nothing more beyond that. All you're doing is getting a checkout URL and an ID. So when you're doing a headless build and you're and you're going, you're using this cart API, the checkout URL is going to be your my Shopify URL with the okay. appended unique ID. So you can actually go to Shopify's checkout. Okay. Great. Okay. So then we can check. So so because of the way that we set this. We can see that it's like getting the result.json and then it returns that back. It does a little bit of error checking if the, the request fails. So what we're going to do is we're just going to check like if it's missing data, then we will just return a, a plain old status 500. Code. Yeah, yeah, so we'll just 500 and say something went wrong with the server and we can JSON stringify a message and that message will say there was a problem creating a cart. Right, that's a that's a useful-ish message. It's not a great message, but we're gonna live with it. And then if we if we do get this, what we want to send back instead of this to do message, is we can pop down here, and let's uh, let's let's send it back. Let's pass the card ID and the checkout URL back through. Okay, so we want a um, card ID and a checkout URL. Yeah. All right. So and if you're the the uh, response you get back is like several layers deep. Um, so you're going to have to check for uh, cart create is the first response. Cart create. Check to see if that exists, a little question mark. Okay. Um, and then cart, and a little question mark, and then ID. Okay. And you'll do the same, but for checkout URL. Okay, so same, same this bit. And then we'll say checkout URL. Okay. Yep. And that should be the whole thing. Let me do a quick check. That should be it, yeah. We're using ES build here. Um, and the reason that we're using ES build is it lets us do a couple things with our, our functions. First and foremost, we get to use the, the ES module syntax of like import export as opposed to like module.exports. And it means that we can use things like optional chaining here, which are in newer versions of Node only. Um, which this is very, very nice. It's beautiful. It shortens, it makes, it makes life so much cleaner. <laughs> it really does. Um, okay. So we've got the function is running. So let's just, like, let's just hit it, right? Like, let's, yeah, let's, go to, let's try hitting let's it. Go to postman and I'm going to fire off a function call postman opened in the wrong monitor. Let's get it over here. And we will say. How about all of this? Don't save. Maybe just, yeah, stop helping. I appreciate you. <laughs> stop um, helping. <laughs> all right. Let's do HTTP local host 8888. And then um, did I set up a redirect on this? Let's see. Yes. So we want it to be an API, right? So normally you to get to a function, you would type slash dot Netlify slash functions and then the name of the function. But we want this to be like an API. So we're going to do slash API and create cart. And so by you putting the star in here, whatever we put in the splat, we're just redirecting any call to API to the Netlify functions call. So what we can do in here is just go API create cart. And we shouldn't need any parameters. We should be able to just send it. And it sends back a cart ID. Eh? That's great. That makes me really happy. And, uh, and then we get back the checkout URL. So yes. this is exactly what we want. And now we can actually use it, which we will do in uh, this this cart component. So this is like our our cart.jsx. This is a Preact component, but it's it's React. The only real difference is that we import our hooks from Preact hooks instead of React. Uh, otherwise, it's functionally identical. It just makes the app much smaller. Um, so let's. Well, let's see. What do I need to do here? I need to um, just like so we get need to, a cart. We need right? to create the cart and we need to get the cart. Yeah. Okay. So we need to get the cart. So the first thing we can do is in here, we need, when we get a cart, we want to, 
That has to happen like after the component's loaded, so we can put that in our use effect. And then that's gonna fire when? Just just when it opens? Just when it opens, yeah. Okay. So this empty array means that it'll only fire when the page first loads. And then to do an async call, which is what we're gonna do to call this function, we have to like define another function in here. Um, but actually, you know what? No, 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 hold on. We're getting ahead of ourselves. Really what we need to do is we need to like set up our local cart data, right? So we're gonna get cart. And inside here, we need to let local cart data because like, let's, let's walk through how this is actually gonna work, right? So because of the way that Astro is set up, we don't share context across the app because each, like the cart component is its own little mini React app and the add to cart buttons are their own little mini React apps. And that allows us to ship so little JavaScript, but it means that we need to actually keep some kind of context and we'll do that through local storage. Um, so to do that, we're going to just kind of like keep that data locally. Um, so what we need to do is like check for a local cart, but we can do, right? So if we can, if we can find an existing cart, we will do that. Um, yes. right now we don't have that. So let's instead just create one, right? And to do that, we just call our function. API, create cart. And then whatever comes back should be JSON, right? So we just check that and it worked. And then we can set our cart, which is this function up here that's currently an ID and lines. And lines are like the items in the cart. Yes. So. I'm gonna set the cart and in it, we wanna set an ID, which will be local cart data dot cart ID, right? Cause that's what comes back from our create cart. And then Correct. we wanna set a checkout URL, which will be local cart data checkout URL. Um, and then there's a couple other things that we're gonna need. So we need to know how much the cart costs, but we don't know that right now cause we just created a cart. And then our lines are gonna stay as an empty array, because this is a new cart, there are no there are no items in that cart, um, and then we need to put it into local storage. So, do you use local storage a lot? Yeah, so we actually use it for um, we we recently released a a client site actually that has three different view apps built into like a like a quiz flow, um, editing what's in the the quiz results and then the cart itself. And so we're using local storage to communicate between those view apps as well. And this oh, is built directly nice. into a Shopify theme. It's, That's really I cool. cannot take credit for it. My team is an absolute genius for figuring that one out. I love it. Okay, so so this is uh, this is pretty cool here, right? So so what we are able to do here then is um, we can do window .local storage set item, and that will set our cart. So let's let's run this and see if it works. So it, it's yeah. changed, and now if we come out here. We're at localhost 8888. I'm gonna refresh and no no functional change, but let's go look at the application. And if I look at local storage in here, we can see that hopefully, oh, guess what it's we forgot running. to do? What did we forget to do? We forgot to call the function. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> uh, so now that we've actually done that, we can go so here's the async function, but note that it's gray because we never called it. So we need to actually call that thing. Hey. Small details. <laughs> Just the little oh, things. So we would need to add code. <laughs> All right, so now <laughs> if I reload the page here, we should see jamstack.conf, and then we get our is. card ID and our checkout URL. So those are all the things that we wanted. They did what we wanted. Um, I am a little surprised it didn't include the estimated cost or the lines though. Local cart data. Oh, I know why. I guess it doesn't matter, right? Because we don't we don't track wait, do we track those things? I don't know. I don't think we are right now. Okay. We can we can leave it alone. It'll be fine. Okay. But if, if something breaks, we can address it later. Yeah, we can always fix it. But so here's a challenge. So now we have our, our card ID. So everybody memorize this really quickly because we're about to change it. Um, so if I refresh the page, 
okay, everybody, everybody memorize that one, right? You can see that this change is no longer the same ID. And same, if I reload again, you can see that these are these are changing back here. It's easy to look at the end because that'll kind of show like, right, these are no longer matching keys, which means that if I like leave the page and come back, or even if I just refresh, I don't have the same cart, which means I lose everything and that's all a bummer. So how do we fix that? Yes, yeah, so we need to get the item, see if the item exists in local storage and okay. set the cart to that. And if not, then create a cart. All right, let's do it. So I'm going to first and foremost, uh, I just lost everything. Oh my God, where am I? <laughs> what day is it? Uh, uh, <laughs> let's see, shoot, shoot, where are you? Okay, so the, the we need to check if- We're writing local card data right now. Yes, yeah. so we're gonna, we're just gonna like, try to get this data out. So we'll do window.localStorage.getItem. And inside of that, we just want to check for this same key. So I can grab this key and I can put that right here. And whoops. Then here, if we have local data, we can say like if the data is set, because it'll come back null if it's not set in local storage then yeah. we can, um, we need to load that cart, which we'll have to write in a second. I was gonna ask if we've written it yet, okay. But what we can then do is we can set the cart to be, uh, let's do ID, and I think we can just copy this out actually. Let's local cart, check out URL. Um, and then we need to uh, like get our estimated cost but this is going to end up coming from the loaded cart, right? So for now, we can set it to null, and then our lines are the same thing. They're going to come from the existing cart. So let's just set it back to an empty array, and we'll say, like, to do load these from existing cart, right? Um, and then, because we've done this, we can return. And so this should, if we did this right, when we reload the page, our ID shouldn't change anymore. So let's try. So it ends in ZMX. Let's see what happens. Reloaded, still ZMX. Reloaded, still cool. ZMX. Ha ha! Okay, so that's great. And then um, I think the only other thing that we need to do then is is make sure that there's a way to clear this because if you want to get rid of your cart. We want a button to make that happen. Yes. Um, Once and... you add something to your cart, you can never get rid of it ever again. <laughs> so let's do that really quickly. We'll, uh, we'll write this empty cart here. Oops. So for that, all you have to do to empty a cart is just remove the, um, remove the thingy, the, the yep. window. Remove thing. the thingy. The thingy, just, just, yeah, just get the get the thingy. So we can window dot local storage dot remove item, and the item that we want to remove is this one. Get out of here, <laughs> right? Perfect. Okay. So that that okay, I'm feeling good about that. That seems good. We should save that, and then to actually call it, we need to let's see. Here's a button. And it looks like this button won't actually show up until we've got something in the cart. So yeah. we'll deal with that. We'll deal with that momentarily. Um, so next, we need to load the cart. So let's let's do that. Let's go to um, back to our functions here. How are we doing on time? Uh, we've got a half hour. Oh my goodness, we are killing it, <laughs> Kelly. This is amazing. Beautiful. How you feeling, Chad? Are you excited? What's uh? How's how's everybody doing? I am I am very very excited about uh, how far we've gotten in thirty minutes. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> the magical thing that's happening right here. Um. Okay. So so in our load cart, we get to use the same send Shopify storefront request, and again through the the power of movie magic, I am going to um grab. All the query and this one it's it's significantly more important to have that query going 
because this query is a monster. I don't know. I want to watch you. We have enough time. Just write the entire thing. I know. I know. <laughs> okay. So let's, uh, let's just do a quick check on what this one does. So this query gets the cart. And so it sends the, the cart query and the ID that we pass it is a cart ID, which we'll pass in as a variable. Um, that gives us back the checkout URL, the estimated cost, which is like the subtotal of um, how much our cart is going to cost us. And then it grabs the lines, which are the items in the cart. So we limited it to the first 100. Um, and then edges is like a GraphQL term for uh, like the connections We're between going data. Deep. <laughs> a node is an actual item. So this will be the, the line itself. So we need the quantity, like how many somebody wants, the estimated cost of the individual item. Um, and then the in the merchandise, we want details. So for the merchandise, we get the product variant. This this is for a um, like a type subset. So merchandise can return more than just product variants, but in our case, it doesn't. So we get the title, uh, the product title, because the title is the variant title, which sometimes doesn't make any sense. The product title is like the the overarching top title. And then the price V2, because there's always a V2 dot final dot final dot actually final dot V3. Um, and then the amount in the currency code so that we can pull out what each of these things is worth. So that's the query. Now we need to send it, which we do by first getting the cart ID. So we're going to have to post to this function so that we can get the cart ID. Um, and whenever you post to a function, you get a oh, wait. Hold on. We don't need to post. We're just going to send it in as a, career, a query string query. parameter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is even easier. So um, we send it in as query string parameters so that we can do that. And then uh, once we have that card ID, we can again use our send Shopify storefront request and we send in a query. We send in variables. Now our variable is going to be the card ID, right? And we have to match this name. The card ID needs to match this name. That's yep. how GraphQL does it. So then we just drop this thing right in here, right? So let's put da, da, da. Okay. All right. One query done and done. Woohoo. And now I'm going to collapse it because it's, it's just too much. It's too much to look at. Um, okay. So then what? I just, um, before we move on, some some comments. Yes, I believe that you're using GitLens um, for the previous, the last time a, a line changed. Oh, yes, yes. Okay. It is GitLens and it is incredible. Um, I think it shows me a bunch of stuff over here too. It's really, wonderful. It's I, so I nice. can't live without it. It's, I love it's, it. It's really great. It's really useful for uh, for Git blaming as well. Usually I'm the, the one to be blamed, but. Yeah, like you can see here, it says that I made this change or like this one. I did it three weeks ago uh, before Jamstack Conf. And In what PR? See, yep. Yeah. And it, it's very, it's so cool. I love it. Yeah. And in terms, do you know why edges is used instead of nodes in terms of the, the GraphQL terminology? Yes. So when you are looking, okay. So the, the short answer is graph theory. Um, the longer answer is that when you are looking at like relationships between data in a graph, you have your nodes and like, if you're thinking about rest, you kind of have um, a parent and then children. But when you talk about graphs, they're not, there's not hierarchy like that. There's just connections. And so a graph is connected, like nodes are connected along edges and an edges would be a line between two points. So if you're looking at like complicated data, like a, a website will have posts and comments and authors and authors can have both posts and comments assigned to them comments can only have authors and like maybe posts can only have authors with a certain type of permissions. And so along those edges, sometimes you'll get metadata. How many per page, um, you know, is there, uh, what's like, what else shows up in edges? Um, you can put different, like, um, just different metadata. So it's not actually like nodes. It's the, Oh, uh, cursor as well. Oh yeah, cursor is another one, yeah. like where you are in the list. Um, and just a, a bunch of little pieces of metadata like that, that that uh, that can be about the data that's being returned, but it's not like strictly nodes. It's more like around the nodes. And so edges is, is sort of the, 
edges are the relationships and nodes are the items, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, if you if you want to fall down a rabbit hole, go read about graph theory. It's uh, it's a lot. <laughs> it's your homework. <laughs> that's your yeah. That's your homework, chat. Get out there and get out there and learn. Um, okay. <laughs> but so so okay. So when we get this data back, what comes back from a storefront request? I think we can just return it. Just right? JSON string of idea. Yep. And I don't even need to send it as an object. I'm I'm just already. Gonna like, boom. Yeah. It's already an object. Yep. So we send that back. Now this should, if I go back here and I grab out my uh where is it? My Jamstack Conf Shopify cart. Now I grab out my cart ID and then I copy this and go back to Postman and let's call this load cart. Are you frozen on me? No, it's because I'm editing the wrong field. <laughs> Um, and then I can go to my query params and I can say, uh, we called it card ID. Card ID, yeah. And the value would be this, right? So we can see what's happening here. Here's the card ID, here's the, the parameter. I'm going to send it and it sends back my, uh, let's use All that this good stuff. checkbox. Can I make this? Be far too, uh, text, the, the type you have there. Um, down I? in the preview, below. I'm looking right at where you oh, see pretty. Geez. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Goodness gracious. We did it. Okay. <laughs> so here we have the the cart, the checkout URL, estimated cost. We can see that it's zero dollars, um, and then the lines we have our edges. And so since there's nothing in here, there's not a lot to see, but we can see that that Shopify is giving us back what we need, um, and that is enough for us to go back into our cart and actually load our cart, which is the the part that we need to do here and we can do that by going to uh where is it here so and this we're is touching the existing yeah yeah so we can just like get the existing cart and that's going to be an await of a fetch and what we're going to fetch is api load cart like we said and then we're going to send in a cart id and we've got this local cart data and we pass in the cart ID. Okay, so that should do everything that we want it to do. And then we know it's sending back JSON, so we'll res JSON. And now we have an existing cart, which means that down here, we can clear that up and this is no longer a to-do, so we can clear that up and we will say S or existing cart dot uh, what what was it? What came dot out? cart dot cart. Yep. Dot estimated cost. And then dot estimated cost. Okay. And then for lines, go existing cart. I assume dot cart again. And then yep. Dot lines dot edges dot edges. Okay. And this is where GraphQL gets a little bit confusing because you would think like oh just lines right? But lines yeah. It's because of that metadata that can come along that sometimes you got to go an extra layer deeper. And this the number of times I forget that and I try to loop through the array that does not exist. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, so there's our lines and that should, I think that's that's everything, right? That, I think that's that should our... be everything. So now if you refresh, we should see the estimated cost in lines in there now. Okay, let's do it. Let's, let's do the thing. I'm gonna, here we go. I actually don't think there's any way for us to see any of it until we add something to the cart. So maybe what we should do, I'm going to turn off this preview. Um, what we should do then is what console log. Well, click on click on the uh, the local storage the what we had on there. Well, we don't we don't put that in local storage. I don't think because oh, we're, right. we we're only we're yeah, only setting right. it in in like context in this state. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. And it, that's because we always need to load the latest cart anyways, right? So there's Makes not sense. really a, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So then the next thing we need to do is we need to add an item to the cart so that we yes. can actually see any of this stuff work. So let's go up to add to cart. And again, send Shopify storefront request. Uh, let's head on up and, and grab this query through the, the power of, is everybody sick of me making that power of movie magic joke? <laughs> it's okay. So, they can't tell you otherwise. That's right, chat. You got to deal with me. Actually, that's not true at all. They can just stop. 
Please don't leave. Good chat. point. I need you. Please stay. Uh, okay. So this one, we are running a mutation. So in GraphQL, when you run a mutation, that's when you change data. And it gets a card ID and a variant ID. The variant ID is the one that we looked at in um, this add to cart button. No, it's not. It's the one that we looked no, at in the, here. Yeah. These are variant IDs. So we're going to send in a cart ID and a variant ID. And we want to uh, add a cart line. So cart lines add. Um, we send in the cart ID, the lines. You get one when you click the button. And we pass in the merchandise ID, which is our variant ID. And then what we return is the same thing that we need for the cart. So the lines, edges, node, and then we get back quantity merchandise product title. So I don't actually think we even use this. I think it's more just to verify that we got a response back. Yeah. Um, okay. So then to actually use this, we head back to the add to cart button. And we're going to start by pulling out the card ID. Nope, needs to be a const. <laughs> and we're going to destructure this cart ID and variant ID. And those come out of the, uh, we are going to post this one. So the it gets posted in as JSON. So we need to parse it. And that's the event.body. So when we, when we post, we get event.body. When we use get, like a query string, then it's string parameters. Um, then once we have that, we want to get our data. And that's going to be, again, the send Shopify storefront request. That takes a query and variables. Um, and the variables that we want to send are the card ID and the variant ID. And the query is going to be multi-line. So we're going to use one of those. Grab this thing out and drop it in. OK, so we're, we're close here. We've got our data. Now, what should happen when we run this is that data will change. We'll put a, a cart item into our cart, which should give us actual lines in the result. Yes. Um, and when that comes back, we're just going to send back. We don't really need the data. We just need the cart to update, right? So we can tell it to update the cart. Yep. Um, OK. So then to use this, we got to add to cart. 15 minutes left. We can, we're going to get this done. It's we got work. this. We got this. OK, yeah. so to add to the cart, we are going to do, do, do if I can find. First, we need to get the card ID from local storage. Yes. So first, we need to get the card ID. And we are going to do that in a where? We're going to do this in um, an async inside function. The, yeah, inside the add to cart function, okay. um, we'll want to uh, fetch the local cart data. And this is going to be like, actually, this is just going to be copy paste. So let's let's just copy paste. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be under load or no, under cart. So if we were being more responsible, we would probably abstract this out. But you know, we're we're going for shipped over perfect. And then and here, if we don't have local cart data dot cart ID, if there is no local cart ID, then we're just going to error because there's no way that we should, like something else has gone wrong if we don't have a card ID by the time you click the Add to Cart button. Because as soon as we load the page, it should check if one exists and create one otherwise. So we can just say, like, there was an error loading your cart, and we'll just, like, error out. So yeah. not the perfect solution, but it's, a, it's an OK solution. And remember, this happens on user interaction. So the only way that you could theoretically break this is if you were like programmatically trying to add to cart because you'd have to get into a race condition with the cart creation. Um, so then to do that, we're going to uh, use the fetch call and we're going to send it to API add to cart. And this one, because it's a post, we have to like explicitly post. tell it to use post. And then for the body, we're going to JSON stringify and we're going to send in the cart ID, which is local storage uh, dot cart ID. And then we need a variant ID. And that comes from here. So we're going to use this ID. Right. And now that's set. Where do we set that? We set it right here. So when uh, you we change, set it, yeah. OK. So when you change one of those, 
Does that happen like right? Oh, it also happens right off the bat. So it defaults to whatever the variant ID, the variant is. ID is. And yeah. the, the set ID is for if you have options. So if, you, if you're choosing from a dropdown, we need to update that when it happens. Yep. Um, okay, all right. So we're sending in our variant ID. And what we get back, uh, we're gonna do a quick check. If the result is not okay, then we again just you know just log an error because that's that's how much time we have. There was an, yes. there was a problem. Oh boy, there was a problem adding the item to the cart. And this might be like the variant is out of stock. And so there's no, mm -hmm. uh, there's, but we're not, we're not handling quantities or inventory right now, okay. um, which is a, a whole different beast. So there's, there's something else that happens here. And, and actually let's just try this first and we'll, we'll see what happens. So I'm going to jump out over here. We have this, this should work and we can watch it in the network tab. So when I click this, we should see the add to cart happen. There it goes. Okay. And we get back a response. It sends back the variant ID. So that was a request payload. Am I doing something to filter? Go no. back to the code for a second. And scroll up. You may have had a... No, that looks... Local cart data, cart ID, that's correct. Cart ID, cart ID, yeah, 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 that should be Yeah. Right. Oh, no, 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 that's the, that's the one that needs to change. Um, on JSON stringify, uh, you're doing local storage.cart ID, that should be local cart data. Oh. <gasps> you are correct. Thank you, I read the chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so it goes add to cart and then response. There we go. There's our uh, That's there's better. our cart okay. lines ad. Okay. So that gives us back. And if we look in here, we can see like here are the lines, and it gives us back our edges and then our node. And in our node, we get the ID, the merchandise, and in the merchandise, we can see the product title of the slap bracelet and all those things. So that being the case, when I go up here, what happened? That didn't work. But if I refresh the page, it's oh no, we have a problem. How does our cart node update? Right, that's the that's the challenge we have here. Um, but yeah. we can now check if our empty cart works. Let's try. Oh no, nothing happened. Wait. If you refresh the page, though. Oh god. Ah. Okay, so we have an issue where we need our cart to be like checking if it needs to update. And so, because this is Astro, we don't have shared context, and we don't really need anything fancy here. We basically just need to like periodically check if anything has changed. And so, a very like quick and dirty way to do that is to literally just set a variable that says what set item <laughs> that was helpful thank you um we're just literally going to set an item that says like what the what the status is so we'll jam that conf shopify status and then i'm just going to set it to dirty like okay you're dirty um and then what we can do is we can go back to our cart and in the cart, we can check if it's dirty by just like running a regular interval here. So we'll go down under get cart and we'll like set interval. And that interval will run. Uh, so the, the state is gonna be like window dot local storage dot get item. And we're going to get jam stack comp Shopify status, which is the, the dirty or, or the clean. Um, and then we're going to say if the state exists and nope. And if the state is dirty, then we want to run get cart. And we also want to window local storage set item. And we're going to use the same key. I like the suggestion in the chat of, of calling this function wash. <laughs> I do like that. That's fun. Um, and then we're going to run this every like 500 milliseconds. Um, and I'm realizing as I'm looking at this, what we also need to do is like uh, return a function. So like 
And what we'll do here is we'll return a function that once this um, this cleans, we want to like clear this interval so that it doesn't like that'll do some. Otherwise, we might end up with a memory leak if this like loaded and reloaded. Fun forever. Reloaded. Um, so now every half second, our cart should check whether or not there is new data, and that should mean that if we run this, let's get it in here and look. I'm go actually I'm going to turn this off so that we can uh, we can look faster. I'm going to click. And there it is. We didn't have to reload. Uh, if I empty, oop, that one doesn't work. Let's go fix it. So what we need to do with the, the empty cart is uh, we yes. also need to set that state. So I'm just going to go back to the add and nope, this one. And I'm going to grab this and I'm going to move it over into our empty cart. So same deal. We're going to remove the cart and then we're going to check the status. And so now if I reload, OK, let's add. There's my cart item. If I empty, it goes empty, and we're in business. Yep. Except that one doesn't work. Oh, we haven't. Have we? Did we wire that up? I thought we did. What did I do wrong? Let's try it again. Purchase. It adds to cart. Ooh, but the lines came back as null. What got sent? Cart ID, variant ID. Oh no, did my variant IDs all change? They shouldn't have. <laughs> I wonder did if somebody you edited the product this product. And, oh. oh god. Oh god. Did somebody change my product? Let's go find out. Um, Where's my swag pack? Jamstack swag pack has zero. Oh, it has zero stock set. So let me just update the stock so that I can make these available. More actions, edit quantities. We'll just we'll just make it available. Um, I'm going to set all of these. Open bulk editor. Where is my quantity? Find it. I'm working on it. Uh, look, here, I'm pulling this over so that we can see. So what I'm trying to do here is I've got my variants. I'm going to check all more actions. Click on more actions. Yeah, edit quantities. Edit quantities. So you, um, you have to choose a location. So. And then we're just going to set like, I'm just going to set one so that it actually works. And then we'll apply to all, save. And now that we are doing that, if I come over here and I purchase, let me just reload real quick. Why do you not? It's still think not working. A, yeah, it doesn't. Did I actually Are save we, this? Show me, show me the add to cart function again. Add to cart function. Okay, you are passing quantity in there. Mm hmm. Yeah, we're passing in a quantity. And so the last time that this happened, it was because nothing was in stock. But I've just set the variance as having a location, which means I need to figure out. Is it out, fetching the latest? No, I guess that wouldn't really matter. I'm I'm now relatively convinced that the variant IDs got changed. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here to, uh, we might just have to do the quick, and, oh, we got four minutes. All right, we're going to make this work. So we're going to go into uh, the graphical app. And I'm going to need to do a quick query to get our variant IDs. Um, and then this is why the graphical app is so useful. It's it really is. Yeah. So I want the storefront. And then I'm going to uh, go in here and we want. Nope, not that one. Where's my. We want products. Yep. And then we want edges. You'll need to give it a number of how many, like first 100 or something. Uh, under products. Oh. And then we want the variants. And then we Same want thing. the oh, wait. variants first 100 as well. OK. And I need the title so that we can see which one it is. <laughs> and then Helpful. I need the, I, the edges and oops. 
the ID. Oh my God, node and the there ID. You go. Hey, hey, yeah. okay. We um, did it. Query, what? Query cost. Oh. You run this one? There we go. Netlify yeah. sticker packs, Argyle socks, lapel pin. Show me the jam stack. Oh no, do I have to like query this? Um, what's the... Do I think like the handle? Oh, come on. I need the swag pack. Nope. Can I do like first 50? Is that under the limit? Let's find out. I think cutting down the variants probably also helped. Swag pack. There you go. Here's the swag cool. pack. Here is our first... Variant ID. That's not the variant ID I need. It's the um, other. I think there's a storefront ID as well. Like, like, like storefront ID. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Admin ID, storefront ID. Um, um that that's the, the the first ID is the actual unique ID for the variant. Okay, so um, here is the variant ID. Make this smaller so I can actually get to it. All right, so I'm going to change this one out for the extra small. If I please let me select things. What are you doing? Okay. We'll clean it up. It'll be fine. That's not what you selected. What are you selecting right now? Oh my goodness, y'all. What just happened? Swag pack, storefront ID. Copy paste. Hey, hey. There we go. All right. Let's see if it's different. Yeah, I, I don't know what's going and on. And this was for which this is for the first variant, I assume. Yeah. Yes. So here we're going to add to cart. No, it's the index. Um, and then we want to search. And that matches. So this variant okay. ID matches. Go back to the product. Somebody just uh, mentioned that it's in draft mode, that it's not actually published. That might be blocking. Oh, that me. is absolutely what's going on. So let's go back. Uh, oh, it's always fun when things change. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> swag pack. Here's our swag pack. No, it's Wait, active. it says it's active. Um, is it available on your storefront API? Yeah. James.conf. Yeah, it's there. It's there. Active sales channels. Um. Okay, let's just turn it off and turn it on again and see if that makes a difference. Fingers crossed. You know what? If if all else fails, uh, we can just chalk this one up to me not knowing what I'm doing with the the comp swag itself. And that let's go back here. We know this one has one in stock. And then it worked. So okay, okay so it, works, it was yeah. probably just some lag. But anyways, so now we have the ability to like if I go add another one of these. It says 2x, um, and then if I add one of these, it gives us a slap bracelet. Okay, so we did it. We did it, yeah. Exactly, in, in exactly one hour. Can so, I make one request, yes, one little please. thing to add? Um, on the success function, after adding a cart, toggle the cart open. On the success function, after adding to after cart. After you add to the cart, yep. Toggle the cart um, open. Now, the way that we would do that is potentially more than we have time for. <laughs> oh, okay. Because I we, thought it just lived inside there. You can just say you just add toggle cart to the. I I guess if it was I well actually yeah I guess I could I could I could set open to true if it. Oh, changes. was was toggle cart not? Okay. Right. So toggle feel, cart's here. But yeah. If it was open and you added the cart, right? Then it would. Got it. it got it. Got so it. You're this, right. Yeah. There we there go. We go. Okay. And that way, because otherwise my... what would happen is if I added, it would like toggle close. It would just toggle. Okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Okay. Yeah. So we we did the thing. We, we did it. Yes. All right. So Kelly, thank you so much for all of your help and guidance and making sure that I didn't get completely off the rails as we did an absolute speed run of getting a cart <laughs> in place. Um, everybody, we're going to do two more of these today. So we're back in like 14 minutes. I'm not even going to turn the stream off. We're just going to, we're going to get Kelly back to her day being a dual founder so <laughs> thank you so much I, for taking uh, time out i have some food here that i need to eat so that's what i'm going to do next okay so you you go <laughs> eat your food 
Uh, next up, we are bringing on um, Rob Sutter from Fauna, and we're going to set up some Shopify coupon codes. So, so be back here in 13 minutes, and we are going to get up and running with Rob. Kelly, thank you so much. We will see you all in exactly 13 minutes. <laughs> thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your day.